Okay, so hi, my name is Nicole. I'm 15, and I'm going to share a little bit of my story with you guys. But before I start, I just want to start with this little saying, something I'm going to end with as well. Faith comes by hearing, which is also hearing the word of God. But in the same way, faith comes by hearing, hearing what other people have to say about you. And depending on how you take it, if you implement the bad stuff in your life, then that's how pretty much you're going to turn out. So, obviously, as my mum just told you, um, I started to get, I started gaining depression from the age of eight, mostly because of the bullying that I had in school. I was bullied because of my special needs. I was bullied because, like, certain parts of my uniform were funny. I was basically bullied because I was, I was one of those really shy people. So I think that kind of yeah. added on to me being the easier target. And obviously, I tried speaking mm. up about it towards teachers, towards assistants and things. And then, like, their reaction was just completely dismissing it, which obviously didn't really help in my later years. So because, obviously, as well, I had to boil it all in. Like, I couldn't expose it to anybody for fear of rejection, for fear of being called a liar, being called crazy, for, for somebody to say to me, oh, you're, too, you're a bit young to know those type of things. And then I think just before the transition from primary to secondary school, like I started feeling all these suicidal thoughts that I just started looking at myself in the mirror and I was just like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't be here. Like maybe I was a mistake. You know, and then year seven, like obviously the first month was good, but then obviously it had its downfall, which led to me being bullied again, like different sets of people, but it still had that same effect on me. So obviously it caused me. I was just I was I was literally just done like I was already planning how I was going to die I was already writing all the letters to my friends to my family and things and then like then the day came and it happened well it almost happened so I was basically on a high building because I decided not to use a rope and I was I was virtually steps away when I say steps away I I mean literally steps away like I was walking I was walking I was walking I was walking slowly in my head like the devil didn't play me it was just like oh yes Nicole you're doing this right just one more step one more step and you're done you're going up into heaven you're gonna be this you're gonna be that you're gonna be so happy your life's finally begun but like literally something pulled me back now obviously at the time i was a bit like what because at that point we stopped going to church for about two three years yeah one year one One year year, one year and obviously in that church i didn't really learn as as much as i should personally saying so like obviously well in other words god kept me for some reason obviously in my head I was, I was going all ballistic. I was having arguments with myself. I was just like, what? Why are you doing this? Why are you going back down? You should have finished what you were meant to do. You're supposed to finish your job, basically. But then instead, I found myself walking, taking a bus, and then taking a long walk back home, only to see my mom, my sister, and a load of police officers all crying and stuff. And from there, I just couldn't stop apologizing. Like, I think for the next month, even when I was in the mental institute, like, I I just couldn't forgive myself, literally, because it was just like, wow, you disappointed yourself. You were meant to do something, and you couldn't even do that. So I kind of felt like a failure at that point. But, like, I think one of the reasons why it caused something like that to happen was... I don't, I don't fully blame the school system, but I do blame, like, how some of the people went about it. Because I think the way they dismissed it, like, they must have mistaken my mental health 
for something that was a part of QPD. Like, so, mm. like, oh, it's your hormones and all that stuff. And that's something that I hate to hear, even now, when there's certain people in the class suffering from, like, different um, learning difficulties and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, you have some of those teachers that are just really harsh and disrespectful towards them about it. Well, like, that, that's one of the stuff that really gets me. So, anyways, I think after the day that I attempted, I spent about four days in West Middlesex Hospital while waiting for a bed. Then after a few days, we went by taxi to the American Institute, which was all the way in Southampton. So that was literally a two-hour drive. So obviously, our family dealing with all these financial issues, like, I, could, I couldn't see anybody for a month and a half before my nan, my nan came to, for, for me to leave for an overnight stay. Now, I think the first month was probably the hardest. Honestly speaking, because I think it was a complete new world for me. Obviously, I had my arguments with my family. Like, I'd I'd be like all um, what's the word? I was I would have quite the temper, but at the end of the day, like my family is my family. I love each and every person. So the fact that I spent that long in a place that was completely new to me, like surrounding myself with strangers on the daily like I think at first that really scared me and I kind of felt like the freak the elephant in the room like yeah. nobody because everybody yeah. already had somebody and things so I was kind of like jealous in a sense but at the same time just miserable but then obviously me choosing not to kill myself I think that was one of the greatest things I could have done because I now know from there, I had to start healing. I had to start the transition from where I was to where I'm going to be. Because even though I'm, I'm healed, I'm still healing. Because it's only been like two, two and a half years since. Three, three almost three years. Actually, came out three years ago. Oh. February. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I came out in uh, February, February 2016. Yeah. And obviously, I think it was partly an early release because there was this traumatic thing that happened in the hospital. I don't really want to go into it because of obviously my own reasons. But I think when I left, I was happy because I wanted to see my family and things. I missed the food. <laughs> and I just wanted to go back into daily living. But I went out only to realize that I wasn't, I did not feel at all ready. Like my mind, my spirit, my soul was not at all prepared. Because um, when I came out, um, my mum obviously said that, oh, we start going to a new church and things. And at the time, my mind, my mind was like, not knowing, not everybody knew this, but my mind was obviously kind of skeptical towards church and things because I was just like, oh, not again. Why do I go to another church? All that jazz. And I think even in the hospital, when I say prayer works, prayer works because I must have prayed once, once in the hospital. I wish I did more of it, honestly. But like that day, I started praying, like some some really positive light started to manifest in my soul. And it was it was a process, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like within a month, two months after my discharge, like I saw I still had some of the suicidal thinking and stuff, but obviously like my mum told you she's not somebody that's gonna throw a pity party with you. She's not gonna like I cry and cry and cry, but she's not gonna sit there and cry with me, you know? So she'll be like she'll be telling me straight. Like there isn't any sympathy in her words she just says it like it is and whether whether i like it or not i just have to take it which is something i've come to realize and i thank my mom for being my mom because i know not many of my friends moms are like mine in the sense that like some of them 
have suffered from depression and in some instances like even thought about suicide and things and obviously they tell me sometimes how their parents are like all judgmental about it and there's even some people who who are african and their parents' mentality of it is just like oh what's wrong with you why why are you thinking these thoughts just get rid of it or like oh is the demon trying to manifest inside of you or oh you need to read your scriptures more you need to do prayer more you need to do this you need to do that but sometimes it's deeper it's deeper than that because it's also to do with the circumstances and how you're raised because if you're raised for example by a mom who smokes and a dad who excessively drinks then how how would you want your child 20 30 years down the line to be completely good or like good is in doing everything right now obviously the child will gain the habits and before you know it you'll start conforming to the habits and sometimes in certain cases doing worse also and so that is something that many people have to bear in mind and i think another thing is i think there is quite a, a taboo stigma around mental health because people focus more on the physicality of it so things like cancer obesity and stuff i'm not saying that they are relevant they're just as important but then they compare the visible illnesses to the to the invisible uh, illnesses. It doesn't. It to some people it doesn't make sense. It's just like how can you be comparing something like cancer to something mm. like depression or something like suicide? But we don't understand is your brain like mentally is more likely to gain things than physicality. And in most cases, like, wherever you get physically, it all starts from your mind. Like, it's literally your mindset, how you think of things. Because obviously, like, two, three years of bullying implemented my mental state, my mental health, the way I thought about myself, the way I thought about certain issues and things, which caused me to be the way I am. Like, yeah, it might have taken time, but once it's inside of you and you choose to let it grow into whatever it grows to, then obviously <coughs> the finishing product is going to be what you think. So, yeah. That's you are one absolute brave, brave girl, brave woman. You and your mom, you're just amazing. Your story touched me so much. I'm just holding it together. And there's a lot that we can learn. We can learn from having these conversations. Um, do you mind me just saying if there's, if I think there's like a music in the background. Yeah, I'm putting it down. Yeah, give me the room. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, because there is so much that we can learn when, when youths like you, young adults like you yourself come out and share your, you know, your, your, your journey with us and share your story with us. And I'm so glad that, you know, we're able to pull back and, and look at you now, you know, amazing, beautiful, sharing your experience with us and telling us and being an advocate as well for, you know, what is going on, especially within our African community, because like you say, there's, you have your friends that their mom, just non-talently wave it by when they talk about how they feel you know and they, they go to their parents and the parents are not understanding but your, your mom was able to you know walk that journey with you because she has also gone through that journey herself and understand it a lot more and i always wish that you know mental health is something that we can bottle up and you know put in something in, in visual and put the pain in a visual way that people can literally see what it is and how much suffering people are how much pain is behind that invisible illness because we are more um more more um we're quick to help somebody with a broken leg or an open scar yeah. and we're not going to be judgmental we all be like oh my god what can i do what can i do what? you see everyone around you but when it comes to things that are yeah. invisible and the things that we can't see 
we don't know. I, I don't mm. know if it's lack of knowledge. Well, it's, I think it's part of that as well because even I myself, I didn't know what depression yeah. was. And I went through that not knowing what it was yeah. until my later years into my early 30s, you know. That was when I began to realize what it was. But growing up, we never had that conversation at home. Nobody told you that. If you complain about anything, they'll just tell you, what are you complaining about? You're not paying bills. You know, all you have to do is go to school, come back, you know, and do yeah. walk around the house. And what, why are you complaining? You know, so I'm so glad that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm thanking God that you pull, pull through and you're able to come today and teach us a little bit and also share with us because we as parents, we need to also learn from our children and we need to also when we hear experiences like yours it would make us sit up a little bit more and listen more to our kids instead of you know always being dismiss dismissive towards our, our younger our, our children because we feel like oh they don't have anything to worry about but